This is a coronavirus data set that I found on Kaggle from Johns Hopkins University, and we'll be using the COVID-19 line list data.csv file. So if we take a look at the columns, we can see the gender of a person who got infected, their age, as well as if they recovered or died. The link to the data set will be in the description, but if you're on this website, you can scroll down and click the download button. So on my desktop, I'll create a folder called COVID underscore R, and I'll put the CSV file into it. If we open the CSV file in Excel, we can take a look at what some of the data looks like. Um, so yeah, we have a bunch of columns. Some of the data is missing, but that is okay. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see that we have 1,085 entries. So that should be plenty for our analysis. Now I'll open up our studio and we'll get started importing the data set. So on the top left, I'll click File, Import Data Set from Text Base. And then I'll find the CSV file that we just downloaded. So I'll go to my COVID underscore R folder on my desktop, click the CSV file. So we can see in the data frame, that's what all of our data will look like. And I'll click Import. So we can see some of the data here that we're viewing, but I'll copy this line from the console, which actually reads in our CSV file, and I'll create a new R script and I'll paste it in. For the purposes of convenience, I'll rename this variable as data so that I don't have to type this long name every time. I'll save this R script in the folder where the CSV file is located, and I'll just call it script. It is usually a good practice to start your R scripts with this line, which just removes all of the data and all of the variables that you have previously loaded. And then I'll import a library called hmisc. In order to download this library if you haven't already, you can run this command in your console. So install .packages and then hmisc in quotes. This will take just a few seconds. So now we can use a describe command that we imported from hmisc. So we'll just say describe data and we will run this. So after running this, we'll have a lot of output in our console, but if we scroll up, we can see some informative things about our data. For instance, we have 27 columns and 1,085 observations. If we scroll further down, and we see that 183 entries are missing gender, uh, but the others aren't. And then if we scroll down to death, we have 14 distinct values for some reason, because some entries report death as zero or one, but some just report the date of the death. So death is zero if the person didn't die, one if the person did die, but some report just the date. So we have to clean this up because this is inconsistent and difficult to work with. Using the dollar sign, we'll create a new column in our data set called death underscore dummy. And that will be equal to as dot integer data dollar sign death is not equal to zero. So we're saying if the death column is not equal to zero, then the person died. If it is equal to zero, then they didn't. Running the unique command on this new column, we can see that the only values are 0, 1. So we fixed the issue and cleaned up our data. So how would we calculate the death rate using this information and this new column that we just created? Well, we need to see how many people died out of how many total people that were infected in this data set. So we will sum all the death dummy entries and then we'll divide it by the number of rows. And we get a death rate of about 5.8%. Moving on, according to the media, the average person that dies from the coronavirus is older than the person who survives. So can we prove that this claim is actually correct using your data? So our claim is that people who die are older than people who survive. Let's see how we can show this. So we'll make a variable called dead, and this will be the subset of our data where the death dummy is equal to one. So it'll be all the rows where people are dead, then the live variable will be all of the rows where people survived. So we have 63 people who died and 1,022 that survived. So now let's calculate the mean age of both groups. So we'll run the mean command and do dead dollar sign age and then mean alive dollar sign age. And let's run all of these. And we get an A as a result. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at our data. So if we scroll back and we find age, we can see some of the entries have an A. So R doesn't know how to interpret that. So we'll put in the following option, na.remove equals true. This will just ignore every entry where the age is unknown. So after running this, we can see the age difference. The difference between dead and alive is about 20 years, but is this statistically significant? How can we check this? For this, we will employ the t-test command. So let's type it in, t.test. The first entry will be alive dollar sign age. And then the second entry will be dead dollar sign age. So now we'll type in our alternative hypothesis, which is something we do in statistics. I won't go too much into this, but you will see what the output is. So this will be two dot cited in quotes. And then we need our confidence interval. So for this, let's just try a confidence interval of 95% or 0 0.95. So let's actually run this command and see what our output is. Um, so let's take this step by step. 
So here are the two means we just calculated, 48 and 68.6. .6. But if you look at the 95% confidence interval, we see that there's a 95% chance that uh, the difference between a person who's alive and dead in age is from, neg from 24 years to 16.7 years. So on average, the person who's alive is actually much, much younger. We can change the confidence interval to 99% and we'll get slightly different values, but you see the point. Now let's take a look at the p-value. So that is the probability that from the sample we randomly got such an extreme result. So this is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 16th, which is basically zero. So there's 0% 0 chance that the ages of the two populations are actually equal in our population. Remember, this is the sample. Normally in statistics, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and thus conclude that our result is statistically significant. So in this case, we have concluded that indeed the people who die from the coronavirus are much older than the people who do not die from the coronavirus. Now we can try a similar experiment with gender. So are women more likely to die from the coronavirus than men? Is it vice versa? Well, let's find out. Let's copy all of the code that we just wrote and just change some things. So our claim is that gender has no effect, but let's see if that's true. So we'll make two subsets, men and woman, and a men will be a subset where gender equals male, and woman is a subset where gender equals female. So now let's calculate the means. So the mean will be men, and then dollar sign death underscore dummy, and then the mean will be woman, dollar sign death underscore dummy. Let's run these four commands. We can see that men actually have a death rate in this data set of 8.5% as opposed to 3.7% for women. So that is a pretty large discrepancy. Again, is this statistically significant? Like in the previous example, we'll use t-test to find out. So we'll see if these means are actually an accurate representation of the reality in the population. So we'll just fill in t-test with men death dummy and then woman death dummy. And then we'll keep the same alternative hypothesis and the same confidence interval. And let's run this. So we can see uh, that the means are the same as we calculated. And we can say with 99% confidence that men have from 0.78% to 8.8% higher fatality rates than women. Now let's take a look at our p-value. In this case, it's 0 0.002, which is still much less than 0 0.05. So we can again reject the null hypothesis and conclude that this is statistically significant. What is statistically significant? Well, the fact that men have higher death rates than women in the sample and that that is representative of the population. In the description, you'll find a link to the code as well as a link to an article that I wrote about the same topic. Thank you for watching this video and please consider subscribing for more videos like this.